Ideal Protein is a doctor-designed, coach-led, ketogenic weight loss protocol that uses food as medicine to empower you to lose weight and live your healthiest life. And welcome back to Group Therapy, a podcast brought to you by the Livingston Parish News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. As usual, I'm joined on this wonderfully beautiful Thursday morning, absolutely lovely outside. My two editors are here with me. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and I am going to go with the one on my left first, the viewer's oh, left. Go very ahead. Very good. This is Rob DeArmond. I'm the sports editor here at the Livingston Parish News. And on the right. And it's David Gray, lifestyle editor with the Livingston Parish News. And so if you folks out there are listening, you now can attach a voice to a name, so we appreciate that. Going to cover a few things real quick on my end. If you're looking for the Thursday paper, we had a lot going on on Monday and Tuesday. It was kind of a crazy day. Don't know if you know that it's been raining this week, in (laughs) case you're watching or listening. (laughs) Outside of all the rain and the potential, we we are keeping an eye on the A-meet and the tick fall in the Springfield and Killian areas as those uh, continue a slow but steady rise. Of course, we've had a lot of rain today. Morpaw as well. Uh, Yes, Morpaw down there in that area. Uh, Of course, we're keeping an eye on the river stages. We also had uh, a story that was posted regarding uh, risk rating 2.0 and flood insurance. Please check that out. This is the beginning stages of that discussion, folks. So don't don't go running off the rails, but it's just important to be understanding of what's going on and where what direction that's heading with FEMA and your flood insurance. Uh, we also have a little bit of going back and forth between Shane Mack and the library. He is once again uh, looking for money uh, for his gravity drainage district. That is number eight. It's now a consolidated district. It's very large on the eastern side of the parish. They had a, a discussion in front of the library board Tuesday night. We were unable to make it. We're trying to follow up with them. Uh, so that's a couple of things that are going on currently uh, at, at sort of a political level. Going to jump in uh, first and foremost with Mr. Rob DeArmond uh, because we are wrapping up, or the baseball season has wrapped up. So that's uh, also football. So that's pretty much it for this year's sports slate. Uh, Not everybody in football has gotten back to you, but you were in Sulphur for the baseball finales. Uh, So give us a little bit of wrap up on that. Uh, The bottom line here is it's just really good baseball. the teams we had in it from the parish, Walker and Doyle, did not win state championships, but uh, really good baseball. Uh, well, I guess we'll go back to uh, Doyle in the uh, the semifinal game there, and they're able to uh, kind of kind of break it open against Lauraville. It's kind of you know kind of kind of slow. Then all of a sudden they they get those hits. Uh, they you know leading up to it, they're getting hits and they're just able to make stuff happen. They got big hits. Uh, you know, Tyson Stewart gets a three-run double at one point. Avon Kennedy gets a three-run home run, and and it goes from uh, real real tight to uh, a blowout win, eleven to one. Uh, and I guess the biggest thing there is that uh, Doyle they come into that game with a fifty-inning scoreless streak, and it got broken up barely early in the game. But uh, they're able to still advance to the to the uh, the championship game, which you know, like we said, that was the that was goal number one was getting there. Uh, and then trying to win it. Of course, that was the big thing. Um, in that championship game on Friday, last Friday, uh, just fantastic baseball there uh, with Rose Pond. Um, and, I, you know, you're, you're following along. It's it's scoreless. I just kept tweeting out, we're still scoreless. We're still scoreless. It's, it's, it's you know, not much happening. I, uh, I think Doyle had uh, runners on second and third, two innings in a row, couldn't push them across. And then uh, – you know, I, I think I tweeted out. I said something's got to give here, and uh, within probably two minutes of tweeting that out, it was uh, uh, Andrew Yuritich took a no hitter into the fifth. He gave up a hit in the fifth. Comes back in the sixth. They get a double. Rose Pine gets a double and a single, and uh, that's a run. That's the ball game. That's one to nothing. Uh, you know, just it's just great baseball. That's all you could say. You know, right. So moving over, I, and you know. Before we move over, excuse me, I, tough loss for Doyle. Having trouble kind of getting over that hump. Has Over the past five years or so, they've been to the big dance at least three times. Having trouble sealing that deal. Uh, did, did did Coach Beattie have anything to say about that? Well, it, it's, it goes back to that thing you just go, it's, it's kind of baseball. He said, we did everything right. We just didn't win. You know, and that's, that's that was it. I mean, you literally stand there and go, that's baseball. Uh, and we we did the same thing, you know, the day before when Walker lost. You literally go, that's baseball. That's how it works. Uh, and it, it, like you said, there's there's nothing we did wrong. 
just sometimes you just don't win. You know, they as they say, what the baseball gods didn't smile on you that day. Sure. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of how it was. It's it's one of those things. And I you know I wrote in the column you you go down there and, and it's two days in a row you get to hear dead silence down on the field uh, coming from that dugout. And it's it's you know it's because the, these guys realize they have that opportunity and that's the last time they'll ever ever play together in that situation ever. That's it. It's just dead silence, and it's 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 like the worst the worst sound you could possibly hear, you know. And you've got across the way, uh, you know, I, we got a good great photo of it. It's Cody Mitchell at third base, looking across the field, watching Rose Pine on the other side, uh, watching that celebration, and that's what that's what they'll remember before they walk off that field, you know. And that that was probably the toughest part is watching every one of those kids walk off the field for the last time, right. Even if they play again together next year, it'll be a different roster. You know, these seniors will move on. Uh, it, it'll just be a different you're, scenario. You're looking for Doyle. You're looking at a core group of seniors there that have been, you know, they've been there since junior high. You know, starting varsity games, and and they're 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 done. That that was the goal for them was to win it all after coming up short two years ago. You know, right. Then they get cut short last year for everybody. So they, I mean, that was the goal. So for them to, to fall short, you know, of course. Doesn't change the fact that they play their behinds off, you know, and it's just great baseball, and and that's all you could say. It's just just fantastic baseball, and that we'll go back to Walker, you know, and its semifinal game with West Monroe. It's three to one. All the runs come in the first inning. Sure, you know, they just settled in. People just settled in, you know, and then uh, Walker gets a chance in the seventh that they get a uh, a one out double from uh, Spencer Murray. And then the next ball goes to right field, and and the the kid from in right field from West Monroe makes an over the shoulder catch where you just go, yeah, There's, you just go, you just tip, tip your hat, great play, man, great play, and that kind of took some momentum, and then there's a grounder to first, and that's that's ball game, you know. Yeah. It's not that anybody played badly, or any, you know, it's like you, you did what you were supposed to do, it just didn't go your way, right. So tough way to end two seasons over there in sulfur, but that's kind of the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, like you said, that's baseball. So that wraps up uh, the sports year for all of the high, local high schools. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to football in a minute. I want to jump over uh, to Mr. David Gray. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking uh, about a couple of things first and foremost, but I do want to cover, uh, since we already discussed it, uh, this is the last time those seniors will be playing together and will be playing for their respective schools. You're going through graduation season. Yes. Uh, I was actually supposed to cover a graduation last week, but uh, my second shot uh, ki absolutely killed me. Uh, so um, I, we didn't do that, but we were able to find a photographer, so thank you yes. for that. But we um, continuing graduation season. Mm -hmm. Your last one is tonight, correct? Yes, Albany is tonight, Thursday, the May 20th, and that will wrap up all mm -hmm. nine graduations and also went to one of Southeastern's graduation ceremonies yesterday. They uh, had to maneuver. They were supposed to have four big graduation ceremonies in Strawberry Stadium, but with the weather being what it's been this last week, they had to, you know, make some last minute adjust adjustments, move them inside. So I went to their College of Nursing ceremony. It was actually one of their bigger ones that they were going to be able to have indoors. So I went to that. So we'll have pictures from that too. So yeah, a total of 10 graduations over uh, eight days, nine days. It's, God, it feels like it's been a month. It was just last Wednesday when they started. And all of that within a time frame of a tree falling through uh, Mr. David Gray's roof. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's been a fun week for him. It's been a week. That's right, yeah. But, uh, but, hey, we got one more graduation tonight, and then that is it. But, uh, yeah, we have plenty of photos up there. If you go to our website, you'll see every gallery. Uh, you know, we, we do a gallery for every school, and then we have another story that lists all the graduates' names. So if you're like those people, you, you like to see your graduates' names, they'll be in there, and they'll also be uh, – we have the big schools – uh, in this week's paper and French Settlement, so that's Denham, Live Oak, and Walker and French Settlement, they are in this week's paper. And then next week's paper, we'll have the other five uh, schools, Morpal, Holden, Doyle, Albany, and Springfield. So check that out. Two weeks of nothing but graduations. But it's, you know, everyone's favorite time of the year for sure. And it's a big deal. Yes. You know, the schools are a very central focus here in Livingston Parish. And it's, it, it's a big deal for these kids uh, to be able to move on uh, to the next level. And so before we get into the news portion of what you and I are going to discuss, I do want to return 
uh, to Rob and talk about uh, a little bit of spring football, at least what we know, because uh, spring football is kind of a, a passing of the torch, so to speak. These seniors are moving out. They're going through graduation and that kind of thing. Juniors are trying to step up into those leadership roles and sometimes underclassmen as well. Um, we haven't gotten reports back from everybody about their spring games, but you were able to return from Sulphur and get to the Denim uh, spring game. So tell us a little bit about that. Not a lot of sleep in between that. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I basically, I, I rolled in from Sulphur, dropped my clothes off at the house. Uh, my son had a baseball banquet at Hammond High. I went to the baseball banquet, came back, and went to uh, Denim's uh, scrimmage. Saturday morning, uh, it, it's it's uh, there. There was kind of a it a, a kind of different intensity there uh, from those kids. It it was really fun to watch. Uh, you still got some some spots, you know, some some third down conversion spots where you know you're looking to get that third down or or you get stopped. Both teams had goal line stands uh, against each other early on. Uh, they get into the time portion. Then on Springs gets the first score. Uh, they come back after the break, and uh, EA gets uh, a couple of scores. But then Denham gets the ball back with uh, just uh, under a minute to go in that in that second half and wind up hitting a uh, last play of the scrimmage was a, uh, a pass. Uh, Reese Mooney to Micah Harrison in the end zone. Uh, and uh, they ruled Micah out. At the at the end of the at the end of the deal, there's a picture. Uh, I've so, seen the picture. So uh, yeah, if you guys have seen, go go take a look at it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, but it 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 still gets them to the point where they're they're still in the ball game. Absolutely, something to build on for them. Um, and and one thing you'll notice if you were there, uh, Denham Springs is Swiss with purple helmets. I can't ask Brett Beard about purple helmets. Let's. And it's it's kind of something after everything they've been through. He said it's 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 something to allow the kids to put their own little mark on the program. I shouldn't say little mark, but put their mark on the program. Say this is your this is your deal. This is you guys take ownership of this. Uh, it's a different look. You know, they come out and you kind of look. Oh, purple helmets. This is a different look. So you you got to ask the question. It's like, okay, what what was the impetus behind that? He said between the coaching change, what they've been through uh, with Remy Hidalgo's death. Last season, it's just to give them a, kind of a fresh start, you know, with everything there. So we will uh, be following up with those other uh, football teams. And also, uh, you're working through softball and soccer all parish, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working, working through. Working on, uh, work, we're working on, I think we have the uh, the date set for the baseball all parish meeting for next week. And I'm working on getting nominations right now for softball. Uh, I have all district teams for soccer. It took a while to get them. Uh, keep paying attention, and we'll get those up for you uh, shortly here. Also, uh, you know, one of I, I say also one of you know. <laughs> I apologize, folks. That was just a, a a cleanser. But do want to let folks know that we do have about a slow ten days, but then we're right back into it with Metro League baseball and basketball as well as camps over the summer. And we'll get seven on seven football. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Also, that'll that'll be that'll be cranking up too. Uh, d- different thing to the schedule this year. Uh, normally you have maybe you know one school a host, and you'll wind up with a couple other schools there. This year, uh, Walker, Denham, and Live Oak will each be hosting every uh, every week. That'll be every Wednesday. So I'm going to have to pick and choose where I'm going. So if you don't see me, don't get offended. Uh, we'll catch up. We'll see what's going on. Uh, also want to let you know, I was able to get in touch with, uh, coach Mahaffey at Walker after their scrimmage and, uh, coach Knight at, at Albany after their scrimmage. Uh, it, and they kind of wrapped up, uh, coach Mahaffey got to see, uh, you know, some, some different guys go, uh, Hunter Bethel is supposed to be quarterback was still with the baseball team. Uh, so we got to see a couple different guys. Uh, worked under under center, uh, Warren Young Jr. Uh, and I guess back. And, uh, you know, it was just getting to see different guys, which is kind of what you want to see at this point. Uh, for Albany is a little bit strange because uh, because of some, uh, you know, you got to send your helmets to get reconditioned and everything. Helmets didn't arrive on time. Uh, and then in between trying to get that done and then the weather, uh, they really only got two practices in in full pads. Uh, and they're installing a new offense, a little flex phone offense. But uh, he was pretty pleased with what they were able to accomplish offensively and defensively. It gives them something to build on there. Uh, Live Oak will be holding their uh, spring game uh, Friday. 
Ah, on so the we road. still have one. So we still have one left. Okay. Okay. So lots of sports still going on. A uh, little lull here, but you, you got a lot of things to carry you forward into those summer seasons. It won't stop. You guys <laughs> know it won't stop. It'll slow down a little bit. But it won't stop. So jumping back over to David, talking about kids, um, we now have Pfizer for kids. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. That was a little joke that we had before we got into the show today. But uh, Pfizer has been approved for children uh, 12 to 16, right? So we're yes. now 12. Well, it was already approved for 16 and older, but now 12 to 15. But yes, 12 gotcha. to uh, 6. So anyone 12 and older can now is now eligible for the Pfizer vaccine in Louisiana. Uh, if uh, uh, I, I would imagine with parent parental yes yes that is one of the obvious yes that is one of the uh, conditions the uh, Department of Health they have on their website a uh, parental consent form you have to fill out a parental guardian consent form so yeah that is obviously one of the conditions and it's really just another step to you know it's kind of uh, the vaccine rollout has kind of hit a lull in the last few weeks I mean you, you the Department of Health releases the these figures every Monday and Thursday. You know the new, uh, you know how many new uh, vaccine doses have been administered, how many more people are fully vaccinated, and you know over the last few weeks it's kind of been getting lower and lower. And you know so that's why you know you saw you know over the last you know few months the governor you know adding more and more people to the eligible list because they're just trying to get as many people vaccinated as possible and now with this latest one that's another 250,000 people in the state who are eligible for a vaccination so I mean that's just you know part of the just part of them trying to get more people vaccinated and there's also talks that you know in the next few months children under 12 will be able to be eligible for the Pfizer vaccine so I mean you're going to see more and po- more and more people be eligible for it as you know more doses are administered and they see they're able to get more, uh, you know, testing done to determine exactly what's going on. And they've, you know, deemed it safe for, you know, ages 12 to 15. So, I mean, there's no difference there uh, that the CDC said it, between younger people taking it and older people taking it. It's the same, you know, symptoms. You might have some symptoms, but overall it is effective, they, they say, in preventing COVID-19. So, and that's why, you know, you've seen a drop in cases lately, even though we've had Roughly amount, you know, roughly the same amount of tests. There's been a, you know, a little bit of lag in testing, uh, but you know, it's pretty much been the same. Yesterday, it was twenty thousand t- tests reported this state and about four hundred cases. So, I mean, it is, you know, the vaccine rollout is, you know, showing that there it is having an effect on cases and likewise hospitalizations, which are still around three hundred, have been around three hundred for about a month, and deaths, which you know, have been. You know, some days we're reporting close to 100 deaths, and now it's, you know, everyone matters. But, you know, it's been, you know, yesterday was nine, day before seven. So, I mean, that is getting low as well, which is, you know, the ultimate goal to get it to zero. It's a big improvement. Yes. You know, and, and you do, you feel for those families, and it, it's difficult. Uh, but it is an improvement, especially in some of those cases like late summer last year mm-hmm. and around Christmas of this year. Uh, just two very difficult times. Yeah. Um. Moving into an interesting sector, uh, i.e. crime, uh, that Mr. David Gray has been uh, dipping his toe in (laughs) lately. Uh, He's tracking several different uh, sort of occurrences, uh, a rash of break-ins, a homicide, uh, as well as a murder trial. I'm going to kind of let him wade through each one of those individually uh, and 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 kind of bring people up to speed on what's going on. Some stories have updates, some don't. Yeah, well, I guess first we can start with uh, the the homicide investigation that is going on in Denham Springs. There was a a body found at a local motel last week. Denham Springs police found that uh, they were dispatched last Friday morning, and there was apparently an argument between two uh, two gentlemen and. One gentleman pulled out a gun, allegedly, and shot this other gentleman, a 36-year-old named Mark Melanson. He had two gunshot wounds to the back, and they identified Evan, I, I couldn't even pronounce his name, Klon Inger? I, like I said, I, can't, I butchered it when I tried to uh, say it the other day when I was writing the story. And they said, yeah, like they said, detectives said there was a some sort of physical altercation, and then... Uh, Evan fled the scene after the shots were fired, and they were still looking for him. He fled on foot. They're wanted. He's wanted for second degree murder. Uh, they have the arrest warrant out. So, Denham Springs PD. They've been asking the public for information on that. So, if you uh, know where the 
suspect might have fled to, you know, any any other information there, uh, you know, they're taking those phone calls. You can also call Crime Stoppers, 344-STOP, uh, 225 area code. So, yeah, that was uh, that was one uh, incident on Friday. And then uh, last week, there was also some news on the Dennis Perkins front. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of hard. You know, that was two years ago or yeah, just about two years ago when that case sort of uh, rocked Livingston Parish. Dennis Perkins, the former lieutenant with the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office and his wife, Cynthia, who was a former school teacher at Westside Junior High. Uh, they were both being uh, uh, charged with, a, you know, a series of uh, over 150 uh charges exactly of uh, you know rape uh child pornography all you know just dark things and uh last week uh dennis perkins requested a trial separate from his wife uh because some recent testimony that she gave said that could possibly you know be damaging to him so uh as of right now they are scheduled to be tried together uh july in early july i believe july 12th and so Dennis Perkins' lawyer made this request to have them tried separately, and so now you know there would be a decision will be made on that at another hearing in June. So that's kind of the uh, latest on the Dennis Perkins front. So yeah, it was a couple big uh, crime, uh, you know, uh, stories that you know had some more information come out last week. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about the um, uh, the Elvis impersonator? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, Jason Baglio. Uh, Y'all remember last week he uh, he died uh, was shot earlier this month uh, by and what uh, authorities released this week was uh, it turned out to be his stepson Trace Pickett is the one who is accused of pulling the trigger uh, Trace's uh, biological father Tommy Ray Pickett has already been uh, he was caught in New Orleans the day after his son was and he was transferred over to Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office he's charged with principal to second degree murder and Trace earlier. Uh, Last week, uh, his he uh, or excuse me earlier this week, a uh, judge in New Orleans uh, deemed him uh, ruled him incompetent to stand trial. Apparently, he's had a history of mental illness. So as of right now, he's still in the Orleans Parish prison. Has not been transferred over to Livingston Parish, and uh, basically, a judge said that he'll be tried whenever he is competent to stand trial. So I mean. Uh, he might he, he will probably be transferred to some sort of mental health facility to to receive treatment, and so that's really the latest on him. So I, it doesn't seem like he'll be transferred to Livingston Parish anytime uh, in the in the near future, at least. Well, and we will be keeping an eye on that. We're also uh, I know that you are digging into the situation that's going on with. Uh, War two, War two, in Denver Spring City Court Judge Jerry Jenton, uh, some charges there of uh, misconduct. So we'll see where that, how that pans out, and what the specifics are at a later date. Uh, at any rate, I'm going to ask uh, both of these gentlemen to introduce themselves as we head out today. Uh, so we're going to flip it up. We're going to start with the gentleman on my right. Go ahead. David Gray, lifestyle editor with the Livingston Parish News. And apparently crime beat reporter as yeah, well. Yeah, there we go. And, <laughs> with everything, man. And uh, on my left. Uh, this is Rob DeArmond, sports editor here at the Livingston Parish News. And my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us today for Group Therapy. It's where we sit down and talk about everything that's going on in Livingston Parish. Please remember we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online at com. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox and Please remember, we do have an app. It's now working for iPhones and iPads and all sorts of uh, Apple products. We had a little problem with their little their latest rollout, but we got that fixed. So again, we appreciate you guys joining us. Please remember, you can check these podcasts out. They are free. They're on Facebook. They're also on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. You can also find them on all podcast platforms. We appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll see you next time.